Hi, this is the um, lecture for the data visualization from class that we skipped. And um, I wanted to talk you through what you need to do before Friday's class. So here we um, are talking about data visualization and we're picking up where we left off last week, sorry, Monday. And <clears throat> what you're gonna wanna do is start off by going to Top Hat and find the chapter four data visualization preview slides and read through these. It's going to take you through a lot of the theory of what um, we need to understand the basic idea when you're going through these slides is to understand that there are specific go-to um, approaches, depending on if you have a single numerical, a single categorical, um, two numerical. Uh, let's see, we'll start getting into two numerical here a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about line charts. Um, I'm going to read through that. Um, so when we start talking about visualizing two Categorical, we'll start out by talking about contingency tables. So you want to read that. And then um, how to visualize, like a second layer visualization, you'll take a contingency table and then create stacked column charts. And then we'll talk about visualizing two numerical, which will be primarily with a scatter plot. So you're going to want to just look through these make sure you um, absorb or start creating a summary sheet of what goes with what. Um, so you wanna know what to do in what case. So then we'll get into visualizing. Um, oh, the one that's not in the slides here, I do think I covered elsewhere though, is um, for visualizing one categorical and one numerical, the best thing is side-by-side -side box plots. So we, uh, when I introduced box plots in the past, um, we had talked about, um, let's see, where's my box plot? That you could do a, a different box plot for each value of a categorical variable. So like, let's say you were looking at um, hair color, you could do a box plot on height for each, um, a different, you know, you break up your data and you do a box plot for the height data for each different color hair and you put those side by side. So that's how you do one categorical, one numerical is a good way. Another thing is an interleaved histogram, which were, it's very complicated to make them. I don't know if the value of them is super great um, versus a box plot. So I think a box plot's the better way to do it. Um, and then, um, and just to give you a, a quick overview, I'm kind of flying through the slides just to get you oriented to what's in them. I do want you to go through and read them carefully. Um, and then I want to point you to some videos where we can um, see how to do all this in Excel. So the idea is first understand what are the different options and then go into Excel and try and dig in a little deeper. Okay, so whenever we want to visualize two numerical and one categorical, we would use um, color, usually color, sometimes it can be shapes. So you could have like triangles and squares or stars and circles. Um, if you don't have color, um, sometimes depending like if it's a government agency, sometimes they don't have color printers. Uh, anyway, um, I think that's more and more rare, hopefully. Anyway, you can see um, in this data a trend. Um, we're looking at life expectancy and versus birth rate from a bunch of countries that's in this data. You'll see it. I want you to look into it and think about it. Um, notice um, what we can understand from the different colors that come from whether a country is identified as a developing country or a developed country. And that's going to be somewhat based on the gross national index, the GNI. So um, that's the general approach for that. Now, what about three numerical variables? So for that is where we're going to look at bubble plots and um, where one of the, the bubble is like one of the variables uh, and it'll range in size from the small bit values of the variable to bigger values of the variable. And um, it will be um, preferably done on the variable that has the smallest um, range in some sense. Um, 
Well, there's different options um, and you kind of can play around which one is the size of the bubble. So right now, life expectancy is the x-axis, birth rate is the y-axis, and then the GNI, which was the actual data. Oops, one more. Um, the GNI was the numerical. So these three numerical are being plotted on a scatter plot. We're using GNI to be the bubble size. And you can do all other options on which one gets to be the bubble size. Okay, whoops. All right, then you, I, I talk a little bit in these slides about line charts and um, you can use a line chart if you're measuring the same thing over time. Um, for example, this is a stock price for Apple and Merck and it's being, the same thing is being measured over time and the, and the stock is the categorical. So it's either Apple or Merck. So you can make a different line chart for each of those so you can see differences in the trends, right? Then the next thing we want to talk about is the flip of that, where you have, um, sorry, the flip of the colored scatter plot, a, sc a scatter plot with color is two numerical, one categorical. Now we're going to talk about two categorical and one numerical. So we already talked about in this slide deck that two categorical variables is um, usually at least initially a uh, contingency table is used to to show the relationship um, amongst the counts and we can now color code by um, a third numerical value so here we're being we're color coding by um, let me go back to the data on that one we're going to be color coding by the number of sales. So we're assuming each record is a sale. And so this is uh, color coded overall. And um, I'm going to show how to do this with some other data. I think there's some messed up with that data actually. Anyway, um, so the very last few slides we didn't quite get to at the end of class um, in my other section, so I'll be picking up with these on Friday. All right, that is the sort of overview of the concepts, but the concepts are reviewed again and more deeply in um, this, some of these videos that I have from last year. So if you go in our home Brightspace page, come down to um, I believe it's the exam two. And in the exam two section, there's the class videos. So the chapter for visualizing data part one and chapter four visualizing data part two are the two videos that will guide you through how to do this in Excel. And to do this in Excel, and you're going to want to know how to do this in Excel for the task two um, Excel assignments. So this is going to refer to data um, in the data tab. So in the data tab, you'll be seeing um, the uh, index match, which we've already been working on. So you can up here, I uploaded the one that's complete. So not the one we started with, but after we did the binning. So you can either use this or use the one you have. There's a correlations data, which is a little different than the one that's on top hat. Um, and then there's a visualizations part two uh, Excel spreadsheet. So here's where you can look at some of those uh, video, I'm sorry, yeah, videos. No, sorry. <laughs> These are the Excel, Excel spreadsheets that are referred to in the videos. So going back to the, I'm um, sorry, not exam one, exam two material. Um, again, chapter four, visualization data part one and part two. Okay, and um, with that, you should be able to be fully um, able to do these types of visualizations in Excel. With If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed a beautiful afternoon Wednesday. <laughs>